Greetings everybody, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And that's the light of eternal life in Christ Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But then again, you got Pastor John Hagee that says, nah, there's a back door for the you-know-whos, but uh, that's making Jesus a liar. This is going to kind of tie into the uh, Saul series that I started before I got my two-week um, jail term from you-know-who. Uh, also got a 30-day ban from fake and uh, the book. Yeah. So, boy, I've been accumulating these things like crazy. Now, listen, everybody. Look in the description. And uh, there's a, a way to copy all my old stuff. There's probably 96, 97, 98% of all my work in a zip drive just download it and you know it's like eight gigabyte and uh unzip it and uh a lot of good stuff there my opinion um a lot of stuff to warn you of what's to come yeah it's if you want to know what's going to come May I suggest you study communism, especially what happened in Russia. You will, that would be a, that would be a good uh, indicator of what's uh, coming. But this isn't about that. So turn your Bible to Luke chapter 12, and then we're going to go to the Old Testament. So here it is, Jesus is teaching. So Luke chapter 12, verse 13. And one of the company said unto him, you know, somebody in the, the group is uh, says something to Jesus. He says, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the her inheritance with me. Okay. And he, Jesus, said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? See, this guy wanted the material things of this life. Verse 15, And he, Jesus, said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. Covetousness, you know, being greedy. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, Oh boy, Jesus speaking a parable. Saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. All right, so this guy is evidently a farmer, a very wealthy farmer. Verse 17. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. In other words, this guy had such a bumper crop last year that his barns are just totally full. And now he's got another bumper crop, and he doesn't even know what to do with it all. He's got more food to save up and sell he doesn't even know what to do with it all. He's got so much. And, by, and, you know, he's rich. He's a rich man. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. Wow, my 17 barns are all full. What am I going to do? And he said, This will I do. 
I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Oh yeah, I'm going to pull down the buildings and make even bigger buildings. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. You know, take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. And no, it's not a guy wanting to be a tran. You know what? And be merry, you know, wear a dress. No, not that kind of merry. Merry isn't happy. Take it easy, dude. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool. And that's the name of this Bible study. Thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? That's right. So, when you die, everything that you've accumulated in your whole lifetime, what good is it? What good is it? Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Now, here is the message for the days that are coming. And he, Jesus, said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Well, raiment's clothing. So food and clothes. Do you know that um, Paul said that if you have food and clothes, um, to be content? Tell that to the TV preachers on TBN. Verse 24. Consider the ravens. For they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? Good question. How much more are ye better than the fowls? Verse 25. And which of you, taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? Can you make yourself a, a foot taller? Foot and a half? You know, half a meter? That's about a cubit. Cubit's approximately 18 inches. Uh, or half a meter. If you then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then so God, uh, if then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Oh yeah. Father knows we have need of these things before we even have uh, think it in our minds. Verse 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. 
Was the rich man that was building up those big barns, was he seeking after the kingdom of God? Uh, we're going to show no. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Verse 333. Now this right here is true communism. Not the stuff that uh, Karl Marx, what was his real name? I think his name was Mordecai Levy. Levy or Levy, I don't know. Uh, he came from a long, long line of Talmudic rabbis. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens which faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. All right, let's take a look at chapter 25 of the book of Matthew. Uh, I guess we're going to do 31, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him. Now remember something. <laughs> if there's holy angels, well, then there's unholy angels. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Isn't it funny? Um, the Church of Satan uses a goat for their uh, symbol, Baphomet. You ever heard of Baphomet? Yeah. A goat's head in a pentagram with the uh, star pointing downward. Oh yeah, they know where they're going. And they know who they are. As a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand. Oh yeah, the great shepherd is going to put his sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left. Ah, what do communists call themselves? They call themselves the left, don't they? They know who they are. They know what they're doing. I mean, think about it. There's an, it's no secret to them. And don't they even, you know, if you're a Christian and, and you believe in, uh, you, don't, you don't believe in abortion should be legal and, uh, all the filth and perversion, they call you the right. The right. Yeah. Instead of being on the left, they're on the right. Yeah. So, you know, they know who we are and we know who they are. Well, you should know who they are, but not everybody does. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now listen to this. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. See, when he was hungry, the, the, the sheep fed him. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when we... Uh, or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it 
unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Uh, what did the rich man do? He Did he... Uh, well, what did he do with all those bumper crops of food that he had? Oh, he was just worried about building a bigger barn, right? And storing it all up. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be richer. I'm going to be richer than Richie Rich. Yeah, I used to be a comic in the 60s. And then they made a really terrible movie I heard. I never saw it, but you, you catch my drift. Was he worried about... Uh, Taking care of the less fortunate? No. No, he wanted to build a bigger barn. You know, he could have gave away some of that food. But did he? No. Nope. Didn't do it. Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them, on the left hand. Oh, here's the punchline. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Do you know that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels? It wasn't created for man. Verse 42. For I was in hungered, and ye gave me no meat. Yeah, I was hungry. Did you feed me? No. I was thirsty and ye gave me no drink. You know, one time I was working in Palm Beach, probably a very, very kosher area, if you catch my drift. Uh, yeah, where Donald, the Donald lives. And um, summertime, I'm working outside on this lady's house and I asked her for a glass of water. You know what she told me? Well, my maid doesn't come until Thursday. Uh, she didn't want my dirty, filthy lips touching her nice, clean glass sitting in the sink for another day. Go use the hose. It's over on the side of the house. Well, thank you, lady, for that cold water. I appreciate it very much. So, uh, yeah, this is the place where... Uh, People that have never worked a day in their life. You know, I used to work, uh, do do uh, weddings. And I went to a five-star hotel. There was like two or three of them in the whole county. And this one hotel was a five-star hotel. You're talking $15,000, $2,000 a night. Uh, that's their like starting price, you know. And, um, you know, I was talking to the valet, you know, the, the, the valet parking. You couldn't even park your own car. They did it for you. So I always flipped the guys five bucks, you know, especially if they didn't steal anything out of my car. And plus, I knew all, all these people, you know. Well, not all of them, but I knew a bunch of them. One day I asked them, um, you know, about... Uh, who the tippers were. He says, oh, that's people like you, working people, people with, you know, moderate cars, you know, Hondas and Toyotas. They said the people with the Lamborghinis and the Ferraris and the Rolls Royces, Bentleys, uh, the Mercedes Benzes, he says, they never give us anything. Almost never. He says, it's always the working people that uh, tip us, you know? I was like, wow. I mean, here it is, a guy driving a, a, a Bentley, well, his, or chauffeur, or whatever, uh, a vehicle that costs more than my house, double or triple what I paid for the place I'm staying in, and he won't even give the guy a, a buck, nothing. Now, that's the mentality of these rich people nothing guys hustling and working for a you know trying to feed his family they got more money than they can spend in their lifetime will they share it no their god is green with pictures of presidents on it their god is also gold yeah 
uh, not G-O-D, G-O-L-D. That's their God. Their God has an L in it. For I was in hunger and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in naked and you clothed me not. Wow. And in prison you visited me not. You know, this ties right in to James chapter 2. Maybe we'll go there and read a couple verses. I've beaten James chapter 2 to death, but in previous studies, but maybe we'll take a look at it. Then shall they also answer him. Now, this is the goats saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered or a or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not, ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal all right we'll take a look at james chapter 2 verse 14 i am so sick of these grace alone preachers and i'm not saying we're not saved by grace alone but i'll tell you what your works reflect your faith and jesus even said i mean you know <laughs> The goats won't do anything for anybody. They're greedy. Oh my God, if I give this guy a tip, that's $5 less I have in my $27 million, uh, you know, inheritance uh, money that mom and dad left me, you know. I mean, oh, you know, I could have $27 million and $5 instead of just that $27 million. You know? Really? You think Bill Gates would uh, buy you a, a coffee if uh, at 7-Eleven for a dollar? If he met you on the street? I doubt it. But he wants to give you a vaccine. <laughs> so, yeah. James chapter 2, verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, you know, you got a, a, a somebody in, in the faith, somebody in Christ, they don't have any clothes, and they're hungry, and it's winter. Verse 16, And if one of you say unto them, O oh, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? In other words, what good are you? You know, you, you got a pot of, pot of soup or stew on the stove, and you got five jackets in your closet, Three of them you haven't worn in a year or two. You're not going to give them an old jacket that you haven't worn in two years. And you'd rather take that food and throw it in the garbage instead of making them a bowl of food. A bowl of stew or a bowl of soup. Oh, that lady in Palm Beach. Oh, and my maid doesn't come till Thursday. You can't. Yeah, there's a there's a faucet. On the hoses on the side of the house. Yeah. Thank you, lady. I appreciate it. Ah, oh, hot water tastes so wonderful in the summer in Florida. Yeah. Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith if it hath not works, is dead being alone. 
Now, right here, people will start screaming, Oh, you believe in lordship salvation. Oh, you're trying to earn your salvation by keeping the law and doing good works. Uh, when you hear that, you're listening to either a devil or a baby Christian that does not understand even the most basic foundations of the faith. And they shouldn't be teaching. They really shouldn't. Verse 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. You know, good works follow faith. Period. You're not trying to earn your salvation by doing good works. Well, maybe some people do, but I don't. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Even Satan believes in Jesus. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? You see, you could keep reading this. Do you know who James was? Uh, James was a guy that grew up in a family. He had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. And the oldest uh, male in the family was this guy named Jesus. I think James knows a couple of things about Jesus' teachings. What do you think? I think we ought to listen to James. I really do. I call James the book of practical living. I mean, it is a powerhouse. It's not a heavy theological book. It's a book of daily living. And yet people will argue and say, oh, well, if you're going to give somebody a bowl of soup, oh, you're earning your salvation. Those kind of people, I, I don't know. The Lord will deal with them when the time comes. The Lord, know, Lord will know what to do with those kind of people. But uh, I think people like that shouldn't even be teaching. They ought to just shut their mouths and listen. Of course, those are the people that uh, probably tell you the Antichrist are God's chosen people. And uh, yeah. And that uh, God destroyed the world in the flood, not because angels uh, intermarried with the women. No, that, 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 that didn't happen. Oh, no, that's, you know. It's amazing. I mean, you know, the things the things that were taught a hundred years ago in churches, back when sodomy was still in the closet and was rare, abortion was illegal. Uh, those things are now considered all heresies. I mean, seriously, I had a, a book from the 1890s on church doctrines. And uh, it's basically what I was taught by uh, Pastor Dan Gaiman. And then my dad's dog, uh, I was staying with dad at the time. My dad's uh, doby decided to pull it off the bookshelf and chew on it. It had horse glue with a leather uh, cover. And she chewed it up so bad. I would have loved to. Uh, I wish I could have kept it. But it was just chewed up too bad. It was it was gone. So she was such a sweet dog. I couldn't hurt her. I couldn't punish her. She knew she did wrong though. <laughs> so Yeah, she was a rescue. Dad, Dad loved to rescue dogs. She was a rescue. She had been horribly abused. So, 
I don't know. I probably would have lost that book anyway. So, all right, let's get going here. You know, in uh, the book of Leviticus, 19 and verse 9. Now, Levi was the, the priest tribe. They were There were 12 tribes of Israel. And the Levites were to serve the Lord. That was their function. Judah was to be the king tribe. The Levites were to give the law to the other tribes, the other 11. Moses was of the tribe of Levi. And in the book of Leviticus, which was their training, that was their training book, in chapter 19 and verse 9, they were given the following. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field. Neither shalt thou gather the gleaning of thy harvest. How about Leviticus 23, 22? And when you reap the harvest of your land, Thou shalt not make a clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest. Neither shalt thou gather any gleanings of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. So you were supposed to leave on the corners of your field. leave stuff in the field so that the poor of the land could go in and harvest it so that they would have something. Matter of fact, the Bible promised that if you did this, that the Lord would uh, give you rain in due season and you wouldn't miss, you would not miss what you left. Did that rich guy that wanted to tear down his barn, did he do that? Doesn't sound like it, does it? No, I doubt he did that. You know, the, the Bible, the Bible doesn't speak too kindly of rich people. It really doesn't. I mean, Abraham was rich, but you know what? The Lord knew that Abraham would always put him, the Lord, first. But some people put money first. In Matthew 19, and verse 16, And behold, one came and said unto him, Jesus, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he, Jesus, said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Now, let's stop right here. You know, there are people that will tell you that Jesus is telling this guy not to call him good because only God is good. And Jesus is denying that he is good. Do you know there are people that teach this? Oh, yeah. I don't think so. Jesus is asking him a question. Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. So he's, I, my opinion, he's asking this guy, do you recognize me as God? God in the flesh? 1 Timothy 3.16 God was manifest in the flesh. Are you recognizing me as God? And what is God? What is good and what is God? Good's just an extra O for God. G-O-D G-O-O-D 
And yet there are people who say, oh, well, Jesus, the Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you, oh, well, this guy, Jesus told him, don't call me good. Only God the Father is good. Yeah, I don't think so. This guy, Jesus is asking him, are you acknowledging that I am God in the flesh? That's my opinion. Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Boy, when I read this, I think about it, and it's like, you know what? I think I broke every single commandment. Yeah. Every single one. And if the Lord didn't have grace, I'd be big trouble. Verse 20. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept for my youth. Up. What lack I yet? Oh yeah, Jesus, I've done all these things. I'm, I've been a good boy. Verse 21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say to you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Hardly. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now I think they're talking about an actual needle that you put, you thread a needle and sew clothing with. But the same heretics will say, well, you know, the eye of the needle, oh, that's a gate in Jerusalem, you know, and when, when you, uh, you know, when the rich guy comes there with his camel, he's got to bend down his head just a little bit to make it underneath that uh, eye of the needle, but he gets in. That's the Billy Graham, Billy Goat Graham um, commentary. No, I think he's actually talking about a sewing needle. And if you could thread that camel through that needle, you can get that rich man into the kingdom. It'd be easier, easier. When his disciples heard it, they were exceeding amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say to you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. But, but, Chaplain Bob, I was told the whole world. Well, Jesus said there's going to be Twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Does that sound like the whole world? And everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. 
But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. In Philippians 4.19, oh yeah, Philippians, uh, was a Greek church in the city of Philippi, written by Paul. And there's people that'll tell you, oh, Paul doesn't belong in the Bible. That's usually those Hebrew so-called roots persuasion. Yeah. They'll tell you, Paul doesn't belong in the Bible. Well, that's because they don't know. They don't know Jesus. They don't know Paul. They don't know Jesus, the guy that sent Paul. They, uh, their salvation, they think, is in the Old Testament. Now, those are the people that want to keep all the laws. And boy, they'll beat you to death with the Sabbath. Oh, you got to keep that Sabbath. You got to keep that Sabbath. You got to keep that Sabbath. Those people have no clue. And they love the you-know-whos in the Middle East that practice everything but the scriptures. Philippians 4.19 But my God shall supply all your need, your needs. Uh, Mercedes-Benz is not a need. Sorry, Benny Hinn. Maybe you think it is, but it's not. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. All right, let's go to 1 Timothy. This is another one written by Paul. Uh, all these are going to be chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. What's a snare? It's a trap. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. You know, how many guys would love to have a $100 million yacht and have a bunch of bikini babes uh, hanging out on the yacht and all you have to do is just grab one by the hand and take her down below into the bedroom. And you got your choice of four or five of them. How many guys wouldn't fall for that? And that's the kind of stuff that'll lead you far away from the Lord. And uh, I mean, I was guilty as anybody with wanting that at one time. 1 Timothy 6.17 Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God which giveth us richly all things to enjoy. 18 That they do good that they be rich in good works good works ready to distribute willing to Communicate. Yes, if you got you got riches, you should be helping those that are not blessed. And sadly, a lot of times you give somebody on the street money, they'll they'll buy beer with it, but um uh, I'll tell you what, I thought last year was bad before this shutdown thing hit. I'd seen families out on the street. You know, let's face it, all the jobs left the United States and went to China, all the manufacturing jobs. You know, listening to all the government pundits and uh, educational people, they were saying, oh yeah, we're all going to be working in computer science. Well, you know what? Bill Gates doesn't hire people from the United States. He goes to India. You know, the universities in India have uh, classes in Eng English. He'll hire somebody with a PhD in um, computer science 
and pay them before he'll hire somebody from the United States. I know. I took computer science in college. All the people I went to school with that went on to get their bachelor's degrees, not one of them that I kept in touch with got a job in the field. Not one of them. Not a single one of them. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to uh, the book of Samuel. Samuel was the um, prophet um, of the Lord. And I believe he uh, anointed Saul, King Saul. And I think you, well, I'm going to assume everybody knows the story of David and Goliath. Saul was uh, being disobedient to the Lord. And he was afraid to face Goliath. Now, the Philistines were the, um, they were the race of giants. They were the ones that were why the Lord destroyed the earth with the flood in Genesis 6. They were those after the flood. And uh, they were part, the Philistines were part of the tribes of the Canaanites. They were the satanic human hybrids. You know, it's sad. I can't even hardly find anybody that even teaches that anymore. And it was common knowledge back in the day. Of course, nowadays, they, they want you to think, oh, well, you know, God's going to save the Canaanites. He's going to save the Philistines. All they got to do is believe on Jesus. Well, according to them, Satan's saved because Satan and the devils believe in Jesus. But they're not going to be saved. They're going to lake a fire. And all these false teachers, one day they're going to pay. They're going to pay dearly. And all the people that didn't bother to study anything, they're going to they're going to wish they had. I mean, you've got for every one person that tells you what right Bible to study, you got 10 people telling you, "Oh, well don't listen to that guy. He's don't listen to him. He's one of those King James only people." Don't listen to him. Use the NIV. This is the new improved version. Yeah. That had a sodomite and a lesbian on the committee. Matter of fact, you couldn't even find two verses in the whole NIV, the 1984 edition, that prove that sodomy was a sin. The Bible says, In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. You could not find two verses to prove that sodomy was a sin. Why? Because you had a sodomite on the committee. They removed it. I think it said shrine prostitute. You know, delete the word sodomite and make shrine prostitute. What's a shrine prostitute? Is that a male? Is that a female? Is it okay to do it at the shrine as long as you're not getting, you know, paid? Or is it okay to get paid as long as you don't do it at the shrine? Uh, yeah, I don't know. But, uh, but Saul, King Saul, was afraid to face Goliath. He knew that he was been disobedient, that the Lord had rejected him. So David stepped right up. King David, you know, David in the sling, he slew the Goliath. And I honestly believe that one of God's angels guided that stone that sunk into the forehead of Goliath and killed him. And then David went over and grabbed his sword and chopped his head off. Praise the Lord for David. The Bible records that David was a man after God's own heart. And I'm telling you, people, click on my name, take you to my homepage, 
and it says uh, home for all from left to right it'll say home videos playlist click on playlist I got a playlist on David David had a very interesting life in a, in a lot of ways his life mimicked um, was kind of a foreshadow of Christ so Saul knew that David was going to be the future king. So let's read. Now Samuel, Samuel had died, and David had to flee Saul because Saul was going to kill David. Here it is, Saul's jealous over David because he killed Goliath, and all the people were you know, they loved David because he saved them. Wasn't Saul. Saul didn't face the giant. Saul was afraid to do it too. He knew the Lord wasn't with him. So instead of being happy that David had helped him and Israel and slew their enemy, Saul was going to kill him. See, that's what, you know, that's really messed up. You know, here it is, the guy... Bring salvation to the, to the country, and you want to kill him because you're jealous, and you want to be king instead of him? Oh, boy. Uh, you think you're going to get blessed of the Lord? I don't think so. So David, uh, actually, King Saul actually threw a spear, a javelin, at David, to kill him and David had to leave he had to get out of Dodge by sundown so here it is he's hiding from Saul I mean you know so everybody knows that David had killed Goliath if the if the Philistines had won they would have overrun Israel. And all the people that had the land in Israel would have been uh, either killed or made into slaves. Keep that in mind when I'm reading this. 1 Samuel 25, verse 1. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in the house of Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man in Maon, M-A-O-N, whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great. And he had 3,000 sheep, 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. I mean, this guy has got all kinds of cattle, I mean, livestock. A thousand goats and sheep. Three thousand sheep. Okay? You think the guy would miss a couple? No. Now the name of the man was Nabal. Uh, do you know what the word Nabal means? N-A-B-A-L? It means fool. Remember I told you... Uh, the, the name of the study was Fool? Yeah. Now, the name of the man was Nabal. Uh, a lot of these Old Testament names have meanings. Really, they do. I don't know so much about the New Testament, but I've studied some of the names of the uh, Old Testament, and it's very interesting. But Nabal means Fool. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. Oh, she was a looker. Not a hooker, a looker. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings. So here it is. This guy's a real evil... Uh, well, you get the idea. And he was of the house of Caleb. Now, Caleb, along with uh, 
Joshua were two of the spies that uh, came back with the good report. Verse 4, And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. All right. Now remember, David had saved Israel. Well, actually, it was the Lord, but, you know, the Lord used David from the Philistines. Okay, this guy would have nothing. If the Philistines would have overrun Israel, this guy would have nothing. He'd be dead, probably. And he says, And go to Nabal and greet him in my name, the name of David, the future king of Israel. And thus shall you say to him that liveth in prosperity. He's a rich guy. Peace be both to thee and peace to thine house. And peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou, uh, that thou hast shears. Now thy shepherds, which were with us, we hurt them not. Neither was there aught missing unto them. All the while they were in Carmel. So, David's not only saying here, hey, we protected your shepherds. We didn't steal anything from your shepherds. And let me tell you something. You get some robbers, and they see armed bands of armed men roaming around. They're going to go somewhere else. Robbers always like weak targets but david's men are you know you get 10 armed guys they're not going to mess they're not going to mess with them and you're talking battle hardened soldiers david's got a small army here battle hardened soldiers these are not like these social justice wimps that we have today uh-uh these are men Now thy shepherds which were with us, we hurt them not, neither was there aught missing unto them, all the while they were in Carmel. Ask thy young men, and they will show thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thine hand unto thy servants, and to thy son David. So, here it is, David and his people were protecting Nabal's stuff. Okay? And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David and ceased. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? Who is David? He knows Full well who David is. The fame of David was all over Israel and in the land of the enemy. David killed Goliath. That's who David is. David saved Israel by the Lord's hand by the hand of David. And this guy's saying, who does David think he is? Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Listen to this. Shall I take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shears and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? What did, what did Christ say about, you know, taking care of the least of his servants? David is king, is the Lord's servant. This guy's rich, very wealthy. You think he'd miss a few animals? You think he'd miss a little few loaves of bread? Uh-uh. But he's so greedy, he won't even repay a favor to the king, future king of Israel. The guy that slayed Goliath. This guy would have nothing if it wasn't for David, probably. 
You think he would repay the favor? Give something to David for a blessing? No, he's greedy dog. Remember, easier to thread a needle through the uh, camel through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. Shall I take my bread, my water, my flesh that I've killed for my shears and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? Huh. You think I'm going to give anything to you people? Get out of here, you bunch of beggars. Beat it. That's the Bob translation. So David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all those sayings. Listen to this. And David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword, and David also girded on his sword. And there went up after David about 400 men and 200 abode by the stuff. Uh, 400 armed soldiers are heading Nabal's way. In the U.S. Army, 200 men is a company. Here are two companies of men getting ready to uh, take care of Nabal. He basically insulted David. David's like, I risked my life to protect these people, and then in my time of need, they send my people away empty? I'm going to kill this SOB. Oh yeah, that's the uh, that's kind of how that's the Bob translation, and SOB stands for son of Belial, and Belial is uh, like devil, yeah. So four hundred men are marching his way, and two hundred are staying by the things. They're he, they're guarding the camp. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, "Behold." David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. You know, David's people came and were kind to our master, but but he sent them away empty and, and railed on them. You know, he's he spoke nasty to them. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything, as long as we were conversant with them. When we were in the fields. Listen to this. Verse 16. They were a wall unto us both by day and... I'm sorry, both... They were a wall unto us both by night and day. All the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Yeah, they were a wall. They got, David's people protected Nabal's flocks and his herds and his shepherds. Verse 17, now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do. For evil, for evil is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such, such a son of Belial. Oh, isn't that what I said? He's an SOB. He's a son of Belial, that a man cannot speak to him. This guy is so evil, you can't even talk to him. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on asses. So here it is. She's preparing. All this food has been prepared and, you know, she's going to feed David. Verse 19. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me, behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. And it was so, as she rode on the ass, that she came down by the covert of the hill. And behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. So here it is. They're get, David's getting ready to kill Nabal and probably the whole, the whole household. Now David had said, Surely in vain... Have I kept 
all that this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertaineth, pertained unto him, and he hath requited me evil for good. So and more also do God unto the enemies of David, if I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light, any that pisseth against the wall. And when Ab Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass. She jumped off the, the ass, the uh, donkey, and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me let this iniquity be, and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience, and hear the words of thine handmaid. Let not, my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. Folly. You know, a fool. And folly is with him. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young men of, thy, of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand. Now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. And now this blessing, which thine handmaid hath brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord. That's right, David fought the battles of the Lord. Because my Lord, she's talking about David, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, God in heaven, and evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee and to seek thy soul, but the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life which, with the Lord thy God, and the souls of thine enemies, them shall he sling out as out of the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass when the Lord hath done to my Lord according to all the good that he hath spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel. You see, it wasn't a common knowledge that uh, Samuel had proclaimed that David would be king. He had told Saul that he'd, he was rejected. Saul was no dummy. He knew. And shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel. That's David. David's going to be ruler. He's going to be king. Verse 31. That this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of heart unto my Lord, neither that thou hast shed blood causeless, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. And blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou, which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood, and from avenging myself with mine own hand. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hadst hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. And it, now, But it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him 
these things that his heart died within him and he became as a stone. Oh my God, woman, you gave my things to David? Without, without, uh, uh, how could you do that? You gave away my stuff. Personally, I wonder if, if uh, Nabal had a stroke. And it came to pass about 10 days after that the Lord smote Nabal that he died. Wow. Isn't that just like the, uh, the parable that we read about the, the rich guy that wanted to tear down his barn and build a bigger barn? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And when David had heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord that hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and hath kept his servant from evil. For the Lord hath returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and communed with Abigail to take her to him to wife. She must have been a good-looking girl, huh? Verse 40. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. Uh, if you look where uh, it talks in the Hebrew, where it says that uh, David was ruddy in the Hebrew, when uh, he was, you know, Goliath, when he was facing Goliath, it said he was a youth, ruddy and fair. If you look up the word ruddy, uh, red hair with freckles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But if you listen to the black Hebrews, they'll say, yo, yo, he was black. He was black. You know any blacks with red hair and freckles? I don't. Well, I knew one in high school, but he used Clairol, I think. Well, I don't know what he, I don't know if he used Clairol or Brex or whatever, whatever he used, but uh, he wasn't born with red hair and I don't think he had freckles. So, David, red hair, freckles, he's probably a good looking guy. And I bet you Abigail was not too happy being married to Nabal, but hey, Husband's dead. She could. She's a widow now. She could take another. And, uh, you know, she could have said, eh, no, I don't want to be David's wife. But who would want to be the wife of the future king, you know? Ah, uh, you know. Oh, and by the way, guess what? Since David was married to her, all the property that she had is now theirs right so his men are not going to be starving anytime soon david sent us unto thee to take to him to wife and she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said behold let thine handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my lord boy that's a that's a whew. how many guys would love to have a wife like that huh and Abigail hasted and rose and rode upon an ass with five damsels of hers that went after her. And she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. David also took Ahinoam of Jezreel, and they were also both of them his wives. So here it is. David had two wives. Now remember, Saul had uh, given his daughter to David. But then he gave her to somebody else. I mean, David paid dearly for, uh, you know, Saul said, hey, uh, I'll give you my daughter if you uh, do this thing. I think he had to kill 500 Philistines. And he did. And, uh, but David, re uh, my, uh, King Saul reneged on the deal. He gave David his, daughter to be a wife and then he gave her to somebody else after david after he tried to kill david that's what we call an indian giver right but saul had given 
Michael, his daughter, David's wife, to Falti, the son of Laish, which was, which was of Galam. So Saul had given away David's wife to somebody else. So that's really, oof. You know, bad. Saul was just nasty. I mean, he started off really good, but he ended up really, really bad. So, you know, David had his faults, but he was a pretty good egg. Hey, after all, he was called a man after God's own heart. And uh, so he had, uh, you know, the Lord didn't want David killing Nabal. So the Lord took care of business on his own. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine that? Here it is. David kills Goliath, the Philistine. You think, da you think, you think Nabal would have fed David and his men? No. No. We can't do that. You know, I'm greedy. Uh, I got 3,000, you know, I got 3,000 sheep. I don't want 2,995. I want 3,000. Greedy dog. Greedy dog. Boy, I'll tell you what. That's how that's how the rich think. No matter uh, and no matter what you do for them, they don't appreciate it. I'm talking about the ultra wealthy. I could tell you some stories. I knew some people from Palm Beach. They're they're not like us. They're not like us. So. I hope you found some interesting things in this uh, Bible study. But uh, if you doubt that the Philistines and the Canaanites were fallen angels, human hybrids, satanic fallen angel human hybrids, may I suggest you go to my playlist and look at the angels that sinned, Genesis 6, and compare that with Job 38. People, I'm telling you, it's not that hard to figure out. That's why God said, go into the land, the Canaanites, go into the land of Canaan and kill all the Canaanites. Kill them all. He didn't tell King David, well, you know, King David, go, go talk to Goliath and tell him about the love of Jesus because I love him and I want him to be saved. No. He said, go into the land and kill them all. Kill everything that breathes. But, you know, the churches don't want you to read the Old Testament. Oh, that's for the you-know-whos. Don't read that. No, just read John 3.16. God loved the world. Gave his only begotten son. Believe on Jesus. That's why the church world is in the mess that it is. So, what can I tell you? And you know what, people? I'm not no Bible scholar. I, I am far from it. I'm just a guy that's read it a couple times. Trying to warn you people. Well, I got another 30-day ban on Facebook. And uh, I don't know how long my channel is going to be on the tube. But like I say, check the uh, description box or the pinned comment. There's a link there so you can download all my old work. I mean, there's probably a thousand hours worth of Bible studies on there. A thousand hours. Yeah. You know, if you uh, listen to two hours... And 45 minutes of my studies every day, 
it would take you a year to go through all my studies. I've been doing these Bible studies for seven years. And uh, yeah, I put out a few Bible studies. And I'm probably not right about everything, but you know, I'm not a paid hireling. Uh, and I don't deceive people on purpose, unlike people on TBN, you know? So I try to teach you the truth. So all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, all glory and honor to Him. Amen.